So, my name is Hobo Tom, and welcome to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. My girlfriend is currently experiencing more car trouble, so she's not here right now. That's me, Hobo Tom. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching my videos. Thank you very much, folks. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I have a little bonus video because I was kind of feeling down and depressed because they had Raw up in Jacksonville, Florida. And unfortunately, because I'm a hobo, they can't accept my pieces of aluminum for payment. So, unfortunately, I couldn't go. But I, I should have been there. I was kind of depressed while watching it. But it was an, it was an okay show. I mean, I try to be fair, honest. About what I watched. I think they start off the. Oh, I'm sorry. Four minute, a four minute recap of the previous show. And Kurt Angle goes for a promo. Ro Roman Reigns comes out. Mox Baron Corbin. It's kind of good. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm kind of reading my notes. One day I'll share my notes with the world. But, you know. You moron, put that sign away. The Jaguars are never going to win the Super Bowl. Not in 2019, not in 2020, not in 2021, not 2022. Zero. Zero. No, nil, not a nothing, not a thing. <sniffs> Jaguars suck. Yeah, you like to mention the signs. Oh, yes. That was a grave mistakes, Corey. Grave mistake signs. Shout out to King Ross Twiddell. There was also a cultaholic sign. Jack the Jobber. I already still remember you from WrestleMania. Awesome. Good guy to talk to. Again, wrestling fans are kind of funny like that. Wrestling fans are, are really good to talk to. I mean, they just like want to talk wrestling. And like, we'll talk to you like a human being. Oh, you fat bastard! You dumb son of a bitch! You know you're in Duval County, idiot. God, now I don't know why the reason I left Jacksonville. I thought they turned a beach. But hey, to get on with the show, start off Roman Reigns versus Baron Corbin. Yeah, this was actually a pretty good match. It was a long, <laughs> it was a long match. One of the longest matches this card. If you put on a long, good match, you're going to be a cheeseburger. Again, a classic cheeseburger. Very hard to screw up. TikTok cheeseburger. And it was fun. I mean, it was a good opening match. It took a while. Um. It was nice they kind of did an arena shot, so the arena looks full. I mean, good for Jacksonville, because as long as they keep on selling out, the WWE is going to go there, unlike Daytona Beach. And oh, also, NXT is coming back to Daytona Beach. I got my notification September 7th. They'll be back here at the Multicultural Center off of George Englewood Drive, I think it is. I forget if it's Englewood or Underwood. Also, just to let you know, um, I am going to do probably a couple live streams coming up, um, depending if I go fishing or not. If I go fishing, Red Snapper season's open. And you'll see some videos of the hobo, hobo's fishing trip on, on, the, on, <laughs> on the hobo boat. The SS Minnow. Like my friend's 33-foot Bertram. Which has to go repairs, I think, once a month. Held together by duct tape and like nickels. I don't even know how they hold it, hold the boat together with duct tape and nickels. But they do somehow, so hopefully I'll be able to make a live stream for both NXT, TakeOver Brooklyn 4, SummerSlam is going to be the 19th, probably one September 1st, and then. Maybe I'll even get into two live shows. A lot of stuff to go on in like two months. Wow. And also probably on Wednesday I'm going to show you because, again, I have to work tomorrow. 
I'll show you what happened last time I went to a SmackDown Live event here in Orlando at the Amway Center. But I just wanted to mention that because, again, the arena looks cool on, like, Daytona Beach. WWE's never going to come to Daytona Beach again. I, unfortunately, did not, could not go to it. I, ha I had to work. But I saw some other videos that people made, and only the lower row was filled. They're not going to show up. All the backlash that, that Kenny Omega very undeservedly got. And please come back, New Japan. But he got a lot of flack. The one guy had like a shady, had a shady criminal background like 10 years ago. I mean, all he did was he helped set up the ring. Kenny Omega says, you know what? Thank you very much. Go have 15 minutes out there. You didn't know. I didn't know. Three quarters of the stadium didn't know. Couple stupid idiots knew, and kind of might spoil the whole thing, which sucks. Obviously, not wrestling. Who non-wrestling fans? Yeah, more so. I mean, the front row. Something, something was happening in the front because every time you they cut to a shot, and it's going to be going down from the hard, hard camera, I guess, to like the front row. They were all like this. Beach ball mania. I might have to have my own beach ball mania in a couple of videos. I think I'm about 70 videos into my very short YouTube career, which is amazing. Again, at 100 videos or some other big milestone marker. I have another pizza party. And again, you'll see me playing some more WWE 2K17. And I'll have a couple new wrestlers in there. Of, of course, the Under the Bridge will be defended, along with the Bestest Girlfriend belt. We got more so about Raw. I'm sorry, I'm going, I'm going so many tangents. Um, so there, I, I don't know what was going on. I don't know why everyone was looking like this. Someone probably tried to sneak in or something, sneak in that front row. Finger wag. And Cor Corbin, I'll, I'll give it this mission. The, ma the match starts off. It's, it's, it's pretty good back and forth. Corbin at least has a sense to duck a Superman punch, which, which you can tell is coming a mile away. And Reigns finally hits the drive-by. I mean, so many people have been jumping out of the way and just shoving him into the pole. At least he finally got that one down. And Roman Reigns is actually a really good wrestler. If he's allowed to work and has someone good to work with, Roman Reigns is a really good wrestler. If he's allowed to do, again, not scripted, but bullet-pointed promos where he knows the beats he has to hit, but he's allowed to say it his own way, he's just so much better versus reading scripts and other stuff like that. I mean, he's a good guy. I mean, he's a great guy. I mean, they, they did show him. Um, Make some someone in the audience an honorary Shield member. I've never had a problem with a man. Never had a problem with a wrestler. And a lot of problems with Roman Reigns is that he's just booked funny. And it's, and you want things to happen organically. You don't want to be hey, here. Take this. You know, and no one, no one just wants to say here. Here, here's a here's a grilled cheese sandwich. It's like I don't want a grilled cheese sandwich. What's wrong with you? Well, grilled cheese is a good sandwich, but it's not on my rank. But, I mean, that was a good 20-minute match. Unfortunately, I mean, the live crowd got their money's worth on TV. Like, a good six minutes of it was really commercials. I mean, good room to come back. Some cameraman's going to get fired, though, because Baron Corbin, like, ran into it. So, so he's going to get a talking to from the boss. The boss is going to say, why were you there? You're fired. And you know, it, was, it was a fun match. Um, towards the end, Bar Cor Baron Corbin try tries to run out. Finn, Finn comes in. So Corbin's between that rock and a hard place. And then, again, he goes back in the ring. It's a Superman punch, spear. And the match, it was fun. And, and Finn, Finn gets his hits in on Baron Corbin. And it was good. Then we had a picture of Bobby Roode posing in front of some mirror. Why doesn't he have his own changing room? Or at least the changing room with all the other 
people. Never know. But of course, let's let's look to another cheeseburger match. And this was Bobby Roode, the glorious one, versus Mojo Rally. And I mean, my fear was they're going to job Roode out, which would have sucked. Do not job the glorious one out. It was a good, it was good action. It's, some of it was really questionable. Um, again, the thing was the crowd was reacting. Mojo Rally really makes this match mainly because of his talking and the way he can talk and taunt his opponent in the ring, the way he he jaws back and forth of the crowd. That's good. That that's the reason it was a cheeseburger match because for part of the match he just had him like a straight out body lock and. Taps out from a body lock. I know you have to suspend your your belief a little bit in pro wrestling, but not that much. And it was this really classic Bobby Roode match. Bobby Roode, by the way, again, the other reason why this match is a cheeseburger match, Bobby Roode has that ring awareness and presence to realize when he hurt himself in his knee, he really so. Oh, no, it wasn't his knee. It was his back. He, Cor, um, Corbin, but Mojo was really going after the back of Bobby Roode. Every time Bobby Roode hit a, hit a move like a blockbuster where he had to land on his back, he'd always get up oh, and, and, and sell it though. So it's realistic. It's not like he just, oh, I have a back injury and it's going to jump up again. I mean, he sells it. That's what makes Bobby Roode so glorious. Um, then they had an Elias promo. And it was weird. <laughs> I knew he was going to run down Jax. And, and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, they actually had a really funny Pizza Hut commercial. With Titus World Ride trying, trying to figure out who's going to eat like the cheesy bites and, and, and who gets what. It was just funny. It was, it's, it's really good. And it's it's great as a wrestling fan to see wrestlers do non wrestling things, and just have like the their just a little taste of their wrestling personality. I think it was Lanny Poffo who was the genius, and the brother of Randy Poffo who was the Macho Man Randy Savage. Or was it Savage himself? I, I actually, I, now that I'm thinking about it, I, I think Randy Savage said, and, and maybe both of them said it. But to be a good pro wrestler, you have to have a little bit of little bit of your own personality in your character. And I think the Macho Man said, "You know what? I have this. There, I'm normally this much of the macho ness." But when I become a wrestler, I get this much macho ness. Or, or it goes from like, um, I think even Flair said he, he goes from like a volume setting of two to a volume setting of eleven. Eleven. So again, the the fact that they actually have this as part of their personality, it, it's just refreshing. <laughs> then we go to back to Elias, and. This video goes it goes out to Christine. I hope you're watching Christine. I hope you're watching Raw tonight. She just said, Hobo Tom, take me to WWE Raw. And I might have. Not my girlfriend, by the way. I've been known up in Jacksonville for Jeez. Seven years or so. I know we both have the same friend that lived in Michigan. We've both lived in Michigan. So yeah, about seven years. So this video goes out to you, Christine. And I was kind of shocked because coming from Jacksonville, Leonard Leonard Skinner is really big because because they do come from Jacksonville. I think they were named after like their gym teacher there. Again, if I'm wrong, those up in Jacksonville, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and email. 
Say, Hobo Tom, go back to your little cardboard box under the heart bridge. See, I do know where that is. But, again, it, it was fun. I mean, I'm, I'm surprised, one, he didn't run down Leonard Spinner. Two, no enchanted Freebird, man. Because at, at every concert, they always say, Freebird, man. You play some Skinner, man. So, it was okay. And then Bobby Lashley came out. And Elias got some, some hits on Lashley. Lashley kind of came back. It was fun. It was, it was good. It was what it was. Then you have... <laughs> this is funny because this kind of breaks kayfabe a little bit. But in the backstage, um, one of the stipulations was uh, Seth was going to face Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler, but he had to choose a partner. So Tyler Breeze came out and <laughs> used the line. CrossFit Jesus. He called Seth Rollins CrossFit Jesus. And... Oh, it could be called Breeze It Down. Instead of Breeze Ango. So it was Breeze It Down. And then we got to the match of Rizar versus Titus O'Neil. And... It was, it was an okay match. I mean, it was a short match. I mean, all the matches really got short, especially the main event. So this was... That's not a cheeseburger. That's a ham sandwich. It's a ham sandwich doing on the show. This is what it is. And I think I can finally tell a come and Rizar apart. I think they have, like, different facial hair and different tattoos. And slightly different faces. If I if I kind of look, I'm like, oh, that's the other one. So I'm getting to that point where I can tell the two apart, which is always good because they do look fairly similar. Dana Brooke has some big boobies, and it was a good match, though. I'll tell you what, I think it's because one, I was upset that I was not in Jacksonville. And two, I haven't seen my girlfriend because because she has car problems and on and she lives on the other side of the state. But Anna Brooke more like say like blankety blank secretary. You, you see in those blankety blank movies. And wearing tight, like a tube top bra and a business jacket. It's not me or a secretary. Or you could be one of those secretaries. But it was it was a good match. It, was, it is what it was. Rizar won, which again is kind of the fifty fifty booking. Make him lost last time. Rizar had to win. Make him look strong. And then you have the KO show, and start off there's some guy with his girlfriend on a cell phone in the back. It's like, hey, you're on your cell phone, you loser. It was we want Strowman chance again. It's the Kevin Owens show with Jinder Mahal. For the most part, Kevin Owens just goes talking about him. Jenner Mahal gets, I think, like three or four words words in. And again, it was fun because it, it was different. It was different. And I like different. I mean, it was on the side of the ramp, not in the ring. I actually thought it was a really good setup. Um, Jinder makes great facial expressions. I mean, he's really good. I mean, he's now getting past past that promo 101 part. He's now in the 201 section. Um, KO in the bank. We'll see come SummerSlam. Braun somehow snuck underneath the stage. KO said, oh, yeah, you're going to fight Braun Strowman. Oh, where's Braun? <sighs> he's, he's not here. Oh, yeah, guess what? He was underneath the stage because he actually lifted the stage up. Just the Braun destruction continues, which is good. Who's the injured superstar? Oh, I know. I'll get to that later. That gave me a fuzzy, warm feeling. But then it was uh, uh, Braun Strowman versus Jinder Mahal. And this is a can of Sue match. It's really the same thing it was last week. It was a little bit different. Uh, KO tries to seal the, the briefcase a couple times. Uh, Braun goes nuts. It's Jinder with a briefcase. It's a, D, it's a DQ. It says, that's the finish, baby. Jinder Mahal wins because of a DQ. 
So two losses in a row by Braun, but I don't think it really hurts him because it's not like he's getting pinned or submitted. I mean, it's really the antics of Kevin Owen, and this is going to build to probably a Kevin Owen's true beating come SmackDown. Or not, not SmackDown, but um, SummerSlam. I'm sorry. Then you have a Roman and, and Grave interview. I, I was switching channels during that because it's just really recapping everything. I mean, I can deal with recaps. If you're going to put in a 10-minute interview recap, no. Raw is too long for that. Again, one of my only complaints about Raw being the three hours is that they have like 20 minutes of absolute garbage time. No one wants garbage time. Then you had uh, Drew McIntyre versus and, and Dolph Ziggler versus Seth. And Roman said it was stop com- from competing so that he doesn't hurt himself too badly for a SummerSlam. They don't want to je- they don't want to jeopardize the SummerSlam match between him and Brock Lesnar. So he's banned. Um, Seth has no partner. And this was kind of what you expect it to be. And, and we expect it to be. And, and you're just like, yeah, oh, okay. What the, it's a ham sandwich match again. I mean, it was okay. I mean, Seth started out quickly like the way you should. You want to eliminate one person, focus on the other. Make sure there's only one person in a ring. Um, there were Roman, Ra- Roman rain chants, which were pretty good. Again, a chance if we want Ambrose. I mean, after a while, it was a really botchy catch, and I hope Seth didn't hurt his knee again. Because, so again, that's, that's tough to do. If you're going to try and catch a grown man, try catching this this, this, this big guy. Eh, eh, not going to happen. Or at least it won't happen easily. Even if, he, even if it is what you're supposed to do. But I just hope Seth didn't hurt his knee again. And that was really the change of the tide in the match, and then all of a sudden, Drew and Dolph figured out figured out how to, how to do this. And, I mean, it was okay. I mean, Dolph's really good at taunting Seth. I think it was one, t- one time, it was at the last pay-per-view, where you could hear Seth and Dolph actually talking to each other during the match. I just felt like nonsense stuff about whatever the crowd was chanting and, and Seth's like, well, well, they're chanting that again? It's like, man, I liked it better when they were doing the, when, when they had the clock up on the screen. <laughs> now they're doing, now the, now the crowd is doing their own clock. And it's like they're having a normal conversation in the middle of the wrestling match. Hey, how's, uh, how's your girlfriend doing? Oh, my, mine's doing good. How about your girlfriend? Oh, good. How's, how's the family? Yeah, my family's doing good. Just, just interesting what goes on. With the ca- with the camera and the minutiae, you can really catch by ringside. Again, sitting ringside is a tremendous experience, especially if you're at a big event, because not only can you really hear what the wrestlers are taunting each other with, but what, but kind of, especially when they call the spots. Especially John Cena, he's bad at that. He has to tone it down a little bit. But again, Dolph does have to be careful because of crotch. Alistair Black hurt himself. Down there, gentlemen, because he got crushed on the ring rope. So be very careful. And the other thing I want to know from everyone out there on the YouTube, who has a harder head? That's for the Samoan. Because the way, and, and I know it's kind of semi walk through, and there are things you can do to protect your head when you do a headbutt. But who has a hard going? Because Drew McIntyre delivers that headbutt and just sounds and looks. Good and nasty at the same time. Um, again, the reason why this was a ham sandwich is that there was a confusing end. Um, Drew tagged himself in. Seth tried to pin Dolph. Drew saved it. Then Dolph pinned Seth. So there was lots of confusion going on. It was okay. Yeah, a ham sandwich. It's not bad. Then we go to the B team versus the Revival. Again, it was kind of a really average average raw because this was a ham sandwich match too. Why are there so many ham sandwiches? 
But again, it was a very classic tag team with a revival and the B team. Again, you always isolate your opponent, cut off the ring. Graves just has to yell at Saxon all the time because Saxon or, or or Coachman, Coachman, Coachman has no idea what he's talking about. Graves always correct. Half half laughs is like, come on, how, how long have you been doing this, buddy? You know this. Um. Then all of a sudden, oh wait, but before before I say that though. I say the Revival has a very similar tag style. I'm going back a little bit to the old Brain Busters. And that was Arn Anderson and... Oh, I forget now. Tully Blanchard. That's it. I had to think of the daughter first, because I knew Tully Blanchard's daughter, Tess, wrestles. And then it took me a while to figure out if, if it was Ellering or Paul. But it's either going to be, but, but I say the revival are trying to be like either the Brain Busters, or they're trying to be like the old Minnesota Wrecking Crew of Ole and Arn Anderson. Again, let me know what you think, guys. Then the lights flicker on and off. Matt and Bray actually trans, transport, teleport themselves, and th that was fun. That sets up a triple threat for next week's Raw. And then you have the Riot Squad versus. Thanks. Sasha Banks and Bailey, or, or, or Boss and Hugs, whatever they are. And again, I was really shocked because I'm like, again? Really? No. The same action's going on. I don't want to see this again. But I wanted to see it again. Watch it on YouTube. The great YouTube. Mm. I will give it this much. At least Sarah figured out, finally figured out. Went to get in the ring. That was good. And Sasha Banks' bottoms are getting a little lower. There. I'm a snare. Again, things I can say without my girlfriend present. <laughs> Evil hobo. Oh, wait a second. Cheeseburger on the ground. But again, this this. If it wasn't for the end, it would have been the can of sumac. But because of the end, again, it was kind of. It was, it was a good action. Really a repeat of last week. I mean, classic match. I mean, the Riot Squad. They would feel like they're going to be jobbers to the stars. And, and Liv Morgan's developing a little muffin top there, sweetie. You've been eating too many Smurfs. That's why your tongue's blue. Not from Jolly Rogers. Smurfs! But I think the main reason why the it's not a can of soup and elevated itself to a ham sandwich match is because Ruby Riot showed up again. Yes! Wonderful! Yes! And it was great to see her again. Um, I, guess, I guess she was the injured superstar who returns today on Raw. And again, it was really fun. I'm just happy to see her back. She distracts Bailey. Gets her out of the ring. Sasha Banks eats a pin. Or did Bailey eat the pin? I don't know. I was kind of like... And right around the 10.40 mark, the show seems long, and then when you realize they go through all the commercials and, 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 the, Paul, and the Paul Heyman yakety yak, it led to... Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Hi, Jesse Rogers. Hobo says hi to you. It was um, Ronda Rousey versus Alicia Fox. I think this was kind of a smash. It lasted like probably the action really was two minutes. The only reason it lasted five minutes is because Alicia Fox would run out of the ring. Um, the only other notable thing is that Alexa Bliss would constantly try to interfere in the match. Um, it's just oh the, the match. By, by um, Alexa Bliss mocking Charlie's journalism degree. And the only good thing about this match is a can of soup match. Hey, Alicia Fox lives 15 minutes swinging down the road. So they're probably all having a party at her house right now. And again, she's Alicia Fox because he's crazy like a fox. She's a little goofy there wearing her captain's jacket. Again, there were a couple of botchy cells. 
was the one like judo ish throw where she just like kind of like flopped. It was okay. I mean, the crowd, the crowd was behind Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey. Ronda's gonna kill you. Ronda's gonna kill you. I mean, overall, it was it was a, a decent raw. I mean, up, up to about 10.30. And two and a half hours of wrestling with all the commercials. It was okay. And I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And again, if you just want to watch Elias run down the Jacksonville crowd, you can rewind this video. Again, hi, Christine. Thank you for subscribing or watching. Again, stay tuned so you can watch me live stream probably the 18th and 19th for Brooklyn, for TakeOver Brooklyn and SummerSlam. And I plan to go see hopefully the two shows, the one that comes to Daytona Beach and maybe the one that gets out there towards Sanford. That's it. Everyone have a good night. Bye.